Good evening, good afternoon, I should say. Today, and welcome to the Rhythm Notes of Public Health, or the Rhythm Notes of Health, with me, your host, Kai Ienta. Today is another uh, podcast to our women's um, vaginal health and women's sex series um, called Masturbation, and it's sex for us or our partners. And today I am excited to bring back again with us Dr. Adrian, who's going to get into this conversation, and we're going to talk about masturbation or self-pleasuring is sex for us or our partners. Let's bring her in. Dr. Adrian. Yes. Hi. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm well. Thank you for um, joining us again um, here at uh, Black Pink in um, conversations about vaginal health and women's sex. And particularly today, we're going to be talking about uh, self pleasuring or masturbation and is sex for us mm. or our partners. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. The other day, when you were on your couch forzations, which is so good, and we're going to talk about later, um, at the end, you recognized me on there, but you said, I'm going to do your <laughs> masturbation uh, show, uh, <laughs> podcast. I'm going to be, <laughs> and instantly, if I literally have been a uh, fair skin, I literally would probably have been red all over the face because I feel so embarrassed in that moment, right? But mm -hmm. I like that you said it because it, because it also is allowing me to be, have more freedoms in, in situation conversations and things that is not harmful, right? Mm -hmm. So even, 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 um, preparing for this particular show because I really wanted to prepare for it and not just use my own thought processes of what it is. Um, and that's why I wanted to have you. But I also felt nervous coming into the show. What are people going to think? How are people going to react? You know, because they are masturbating and having self-pleasuring, but we, we just don't talk about it as that's women, right? right? And, and on our last show, when we talked about um, mental health roadblock, uh, uh, particularly uh, with sex, you know, I was telling you that it had gotten so many views. It literally just had rocketed to where I didn't think it would go, like all over the world. And so what it tells me is that a lot of people are having mental health sex roadblocks, not only mental health concerns and issues, but even when it comes to sex, that right. this is a topic that needs to be talked about. So thank you so much for just joining us again as we talk about masturbation, right? <laughs> and you know, and I know we talked about mental health roadblocks, but why do I, I and I, I already know what your answer is going to be because we talked about it on the other show, but why is it that you feel that I, just even me, felt like I'll, I'm embarrassed just to even you say the word, I'm going to do your uh, masturbation podcast, right? I'll, I'll, I'll be able to do it soon. And in my nervousness, why do you even feel, I know what you're going to say, but I want you to let everyone know like why that's your, that, that's my thought process of, how, of feeling that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, and thank you for having me on. Uh, we're going to have this rich conversation. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I think that conversations about sex make people uncomfortable based on how they were raised and what they were taught and told. And so conversations around sex have always been considered to be taboo, even though it is very, very natural. And so masturbation is a natural part of sex because mm -hmm. masturbation is about self-pleasure, but it's also about self-exploration. And so mm. we are all born with you know, these, well, most people are born with, um, you know, the, the average body, body parts. Mm -hmm. And so a normal part of having them as an extension of your body is to touch them, to hmm. see what they feel like and to see what it is that they do as a, a part of being a part of your, your body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, masturbation is about self-pleasure, but it's also about self-exploration. And so, hmm. I just think that the topic mm. is taboo because 
according to how you were raised, what you heard in church, what you heard or didn't hear inside of your home, then there's a stigma that is still associated with sex. And so we don't have, and especially as women, we don't have the uh, freedom to talk about things that make us so uncomfortable because we weren't given a platform to talk about mm. it when we growing up. Yeah. Mm. Mm. That, that part, that part, Dr. Adrian, we weren't given a platform. And so that I'm, although I was nervous coming on today, I'm excited to even be able to have the platform to talk about it because really and truly, I've literally had people um, sending me messages and saying, you're my alter ego, right? Like these are the questions I want to ask, but I, I'm afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. So I think that the more that we talk about these topics, right? The more that people are, are more freeing to talk about them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying going, going down to understand on the stage and say, Hey, I masturbate. I'm, I'm not saying that. I just mean that even being in the company, I have a, I have a particular uh, friend. I have a friend who they have, they have this girl, girl, uh, girls night group. Right. And so I, I mean, I, I mean, I think it's boring because I don't like to just be going to sitting in and watching the movies and stuff like that because it's not who I am. I just prefer to have live music. But but every now and again, I'll they'll say, you know, we want you to come and I'll go. And then they'll they'll have these sex conversations. Right. And then one particular person will be like if they talk to her about sex and they say, um, well, remember that time when 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 um, your sister was there and she found your underwear in the bed and she literally gets red like we always do it just to even bother her because mm -hmm. she just gets red all over to think that, oh, my God. And she has kids. Oh, my gosh. For somebody to think that I'm having sex. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you have. It's, it's like crazy. And, and, and also when it comes to masturbation for you to, I, re, I remember now, now my daughter tells me all the time, like mommy. And why are you whispering now? I'm, I'm, I, 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 I changed my voice <laughs> in just in case she, <laughs> she's mommy. <Goodness>. Why <laughs> mommy, I, everybody knows you have one child. <laughs> so if you say my child, they know you're talking about me. So I got to be careful what I say about her because she don't want to be really so much discussed in this way. But I'm going to talk about, about her pediatrician. So and and because, you know, being a first time mom, I wanted to understand all things. You know, I was nervous this was my first child. I should understand these things. And as she was getting older, the doctor would talk to me about things with her. And the doctor would say, talk about things of, I'm fortunate being to have holistic doctors, if you will, who takes holistic approach to things. And she would talk to me about her touching herself in the bathtub and how this was a normal process. And the reason she said she had the conversation because she said she had a lot of moms to come to her about their kids touching their selves at early age, two, three, four, in the bathtub, and they would instantly um, either tap their hands and say, don't do that, or, you know, why are you doing this? And so at an early age, and, and mostly she was talking about particularly girls. Mm -hmm. So at an early age, parents are telling their girls, this is a bad thing to do. Don't do this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so she was telling me that. So I'm telling you because this, this is normal, just as you're saying. Mm -hmm. And so if you see her doing this, don't shun, don't shun the situation, right. but don't help her. Forget don't overreact. And she, and she also told me to just have age appropriate conversations, Absolutely. right. As she grow about this particular conversation. So I have always been open with my daughter mm -hmm. about masturbation and self-pleasuring and having things in the confinement of your own personal space, because that's just who I am. But when I have that conversation with friends and tell them that I do, it's, all, it's always a look like, what? You having a conversation with her about that? Because I don't, for me, for me, Dr. Adrian, I don't want a guy to have to tell my daughter what feels good. Mm -hmm. And now she's out here busting windows out of cars and scraping up somebody's cars and, you know, being ugly uh, uh, to guys because you don't like me no more because this is what they do at that age because they taught her what she should, what should feel good to her. Mm -hmm. She didn't understand that this should feel good to me. They taught her this should feel good to you. And so now she's losing her mind because you told me this feel good. I didn't know this feel good. And now you're gone. You left me. Right. So for me, I, it, ha it is my goal to empower her about exploring herself and what feels good to her. Mm -hmm. And so and doing the research, and, I, and I'm sure you talk about this with your patients, right? And doing research, one of the things that I learned was that 
self-pleasuring is not only that we don't talk about it, it's, it's a part of self-care, right? Just what you just said. It's a part of self-care. It, it can decrease anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. What other things when we um, have this notion of masturbation, which, <clears throat> and so Dr. Adrian, what I want you to do, my goal today for you and, and for this platform is just for you to be able to have this conversation be comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and the best way to do that is to have us understand everything or most things about what we need to understand mentally, as you say, on your couchization, I'm going to say that a, a lot mentally, because you, as you said, everything starts here in, in the mind, mm -hmm. right? And, and then that transmits everywhere amongst us. So one of the things you said is to um, let go of things that didn't serve you any purpose, right? Mm -hmm. and, to, and to think positive. So today, the masturbation and self-pleasuring, we're going to hopefully have people let go what doesn't serve them right. and give them a platform to have this freedom. So what does masturbating do for women or even young girls, I should say? Well, um, you know, masturbation actually has some health benefits in terms of, you know, relaxation and reducing stress, but masturbation is, it, it can be a very empowering process mm -hmm. of self-exploration. So again, it's about, it's about self-satisfaction and the pleasure that comes from, um, self-stimulation, but it's also about just knowing your body because mm -hmm. I have dealt with so many women, one who was in her 60s uh, a couple of years ago who <laughs> said she didn't know if she had ever had it, an orgasm. Mm -hmm. And so I said to her, quite frankly, if you're not sure if you've ever had an orgasm, you have probably not had it. <laughs> right, absolutely. absolutely. And so, you know, and so the masturbation piece, just like you said, trying to educate your daughter, it's about knowing your own body before you have an expectation that somebody else is supposed to know your body. Mm. And so for most women, unfortunately, the practice of masturbation does not even come along until you are actively having sex with a partner Mm -hmm. um, who is probably encouraging you to explore yourself. And for a lot of women, that's how they get into masturbation as opposed to with, with boys. Um, the, the conversations about masturbation are a lot freer when it mm -hmm. comes to what men are saying to boys, because they are teaching them to release themselves, but women need to experience the same sort of release. So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there are benefits that come along with having orgasms. And so, like I said, you know, the orgasm is the end result of mm -hmm. what you hope to achieve based on the self-exploration. But, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of relaxation and reducing stress and, you know, all of those things are he actual health benefits associated with having an orgasm, which is, you know, hopefully the result of masturbation. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you said just, just a second ago, you were talking about uh, boys versus the girls. And I, we talked about it before on the last show, I told you about the couple who had the girl and the boy and how when it was a, it, for, for boys, it's like a rite of passage, right? Yeah. The guys get really excited and yeah, I gave my son some magazines and you know, it's, it's a rite of passage, right? And like you said, it's not a rite of passage for girls, right? And what, what now, I'm going to ask you this question and you may or may not know this, but why do you think that is? Why do you think that it's a rite of passage for boys and not a rite of passage for girls? Well, I think it's just about conditioning and, and how you raise your children. And mm -hmm. so based on what you were taught and told and mm -hmm. it's how society tends to view sex and gender differences. Mm -hmm. And so it's the conversations that are being had and it's more acceptable when we talk about boys and sex than it is when we start talking about girls and sex. And mm. so, uh, you know, young men who are virgins at a certain age, society looks at them and wonders what's wrong with you because you are still a virgin, mm. but ha will have the expectation that a, a female should be a virgin until a certain point, or she gets labeled as being promiscuous or mm. And so, you know, it goes back to, well, then if the boy is out here doing it, but the girl not supposed to be out here doing it, then who is he doing it with? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it's a double-edged sword. And so a yeah. lot of it comes from your conditioning and your upbringing and what you've been taught and told. 
Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, Dr. Adrian, you said the orgasm is the is the end result, right? That's 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 the space that I, after the exploration that right. gives you this uh, euphoric feeling, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, releases these um, hormones. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, correct, that happy hormones, um, and. Um, that's, that's the end feeling, but some feel, some people, and I really, and truly have, I, I'm 53, right. But I really, and truly have friends that I went to college with that said, I have never had an orgasm. So I don't understand why they having sex. Like really and truly, that's, why are you having sex then? Like, well, because oh. they don't know, they don't mm. realize that what that feels like. And so mm. if you've not, you know, had an experience where you understand what your own pleasure points are, then it's quite natural for women to have sex and not mm. have orgasms. It happens mm. all the time. That's mm. why you have women who are out here faking it because mm -hmm. they don't know what it's supposed to feel like, but they've seen enough television or read <laughs> enough books or heard enough stories to say, okay, this is how- This is what I should do, yeah. And so then that's what they do. They fall into this pattern of moaning and groaning when ain't yeah. nothing going on. Yeah, yeah no help. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, I'm laughing, but you're absolutely correct. We have, we have the, the, you know, I think, I think for me, my first introduction to what making love should be was the uh, soap opera, right? Because right. that was the only, that was the best where it was acceptable at, in, in doing. And they told you, they really showed you how to kiss and how you should embrace and all. And this is really way back when, when I was born, like this is from people who don't look like me, right? And right. that I'm Afro descendant, they didn't look like me. So they're telling me how this should play out. Because as we talked about, before it isn't a conversation that our parents and and they if they weren't talking about sex and intercourse they definitely was not talking about masturbation mm -hmm. i don't ever i don't even ever remember you know how you overhear conversations of grown-ups right mm -hmm. i don't ever ever remember my mom her friends having any type of conversation i don't remember hearing a word of masturbation of self-pleasure no. or anything of that nature mm -hmm. as i was coming up right no. Or conversations about not being satisfied. Those are mm. conversations that, you know, again, it's taboo because it's uncomfortable because people look at sex as not being something that's a comfortable topic. And mm -hmm. sex is natural. Animals mm -hmm. have sex. It, you mm -hmm. know, everything that's living and breathing has sex mm -hmm. of, of some sort. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we just have to become more comfortable having the conversations. And mm -hmm. especially when I'm working with couples, you know, it's amazing how many couples are not comfortable talking about what feels good to them and what doesn't feel good to them. And yeah. so if you can't have that conversation with the person that you are having sex with, you probably don't need to be having sex with. Oh, oh, yeah. you look, you're gonna step on some people toes I'm today. Because yeah. that is and that is the fact you gotta matter. you gotta be drunk in order yeah. to you know, have a good sexual experience because yeah. you can feel less inhibited so uh. you can truly express what your needs are. That's problematic. As a uh, that's, that's mm, stuff teenagers do. That, mm, that's what you got to do as a grown up. You ought to be able to say, This feels good. This does not feel correct. Good. This is not acceptable. Don't touch me there. Don't do this. Do it yeah. for that. We should be able to have these conversations. Yeah. Oh, when you <laughs> when you said the thing about the the drinking and the, and you you shouldn't have to be drinking to be un but but that's exactly what people do they want to be uninhibited so they're going to have a drink uh because because as you said they have not you said something very key you said pleasure points right people don't know their pleasure points right and as we get older in which really the demographics of of, Ooh, of the podcast you. bless you bless you, Thank you. Uh, the demographics demographics of the podcast are older older women and these are the topics they've told me they want to talk about right but when you talk about pleasure points and the things that makes them feel good this definitely should be a conversation that they're having Absolutely. with their partners but some men to, to to be perfectly honest with you they really don't want you telling them that because they feel like they should know right and, which is crazy, which is crazy because that's that's yeah, things that they've been told. Crazy because we're not. This is not, you know, 
uh, men and women are not build a bears. And so uh, just that part, you touch somebody someplace does not mean that the next person that you touch in that same place is going to give you the same response. Ah. Uh, we all have our own individual responses to certain things mm-hmm. and certain things that feel good to some people don't feel good to everybody. Mm-hmm. So you have to be willing to have those conversations and just to be honest about what your needs and desires are. Mm-hmm. Understanding your pleasure points, right? I, you, you know, you're going to hear that again. You know, you know, I always tell you that yeah. when you say things, you know, in, in they, because I'm a forever learner, I'm, I'm very studious. Mm-hmm. And so when you say pleasure points, I was like, oh, that, like that is so big in understanding self-pleasuring and masturbation that is so big because that's exactly in the exploration what you're doing is you understand your pleasure points i can tell you any parts of my body that is going don't touch me there because it's going to take me there right but most people like you said don't know that uh because of taboo don't talk about that Mm -hmm. you're not and and you know we're not seeing counselors because a lot of us still don't think that we think that we crazy if we go to a to a counselor right instead of talking to except this new generation because this is becoming a trend for them I'm talking to my therapist right <laughs> so um which, which is not a bad thing but if they're using it for a trend it, it it could be right but 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 when when we talk about understanding the pleasure points and people faking it right that is really important because if you are masturbating or self-pleasuring then you don't have a reason to fake because you know how to get yourself there right dr adrian yeah and you know and then there are myths that are associated with masturbation as well you know things that you you kind of heard growing up you know Mm -hmm. masturbating you're gonna go blind or it's yeah i read that (laughs) Yeah, it's going to stunt your growth. Or if you masturbate too much, then you won't be able to have an orgasm with a partner. And all of those things are myths. And so, but depending on what it is that you are taught and told, it's how you start to operate because those thoughts are what are going to guide your behavior. And so Mm -hmm. what you have believed all of your life, unless you have a different experience, it's what you continue to believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. So those myths, as you said, do guide you unless you were, as you were saying the other day, think differently about, you know, you know what you said? You said, hey, decide on how you want to uh, water um, your your seeds, right? Where they gonna, where they may come out as weed or come out as flowers, right, right? Right. So what we want to do today? See, I told you I was paying attention and taking notes, right? And I don't I don't went over and read them like this is so good. But if we're talking about uh, producing flowers, which having an orgasm does, it it it, it, it produces flowers to me. I mean, I, maybe some people have a bad experience and they, like you said, haven't dealt with those things. But in order to produce flowers, you have to understand that there are myths associated with it, right? We didn't talk about it because it was taboo and it has continuously been taboo, right? And it was also, I've read in my research, a way for men to control women and our sexual habits. Mm-hmm. So we can just be ready and prepared at what they thought for them if we wasn't entertaining sex and they told us what sex was, they told us how to do sex. And now what I want women to understand that a man doesn't have to tell you all these things, but you can help them have a better experience by letting them know how you feel, right? And so that's why I decided to combine the two topics of self-pleasure or and is sex for us or our partners. And to just segue into that, because there are a lot of people who say that, well, I'm a, now this really bothers me when they say this, but, and it bothers me because I have a different thought process when it comes to sex, right? So when they say, well, well, my husband did something, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him some tonight, like, but you're not getting that from me. So why is it giving him some, right? Why does it have to be the, the thought process that I'm giving him some? Because are you not getting something from this? And when you get upset, you keep, you keep sex from him. But, but to me, you're torturing yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of couples use it as a reward punishment system. And mm. so that's why, you know, when I end up getting couples where, Um, And it's typically the man who is complaining and saying, we had more sex before we were married. And now it's like, since we got married, I thought we would be having even more sex and we're having less sex. And so, you know, and, and sometimes that depends on what's going on. It could be your workload, children, it could be, you know, life stuff happening, but a lot of times it is a reward punishment system. And so, 
one of the partners will use it to say, okay, I'm going to reward you because you've done something that I want, which is yeah. a form of manipulation and control. Mm, mm, um, mm. And so I think that couples have to be very, very careful. And so mm-hmm. to your point, if you are rewarding someone um, with your body, then mm-hmm. what are you getting from that in return? And so mm. for so, so, so many of us, you know, habits form. And so it mm. becomes a part of your ritual. And so yeah. the reason that some people are so dissatisfied in terms of their sexual relationship is because they look at it as a chore instead of something that's pleasurable. And mm. so if you're not getting pleasure from it and it is more of a chore for you. You got to either evaluate your partner or, you know, and or yourself. Now yeah. pay attention that Dr. Adrian says this a lot you got to about your partner, who your partner is when, 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 in, when having sex. And she, she references a lot that if you're not being satisfied, then you need to reevaluate who your partner is. And if they're not able to be open with you, then you need to reevaluate, re- reevaluate who your partner is. So hear if, her. If when you she can't have this. a conversation with somebody that you are willing to share your body with, mm-hmm. why are you sharing your body with them? Mm. So if they are going to put you down, demean, mm-hmm. value mm-hmm. what it is that you are saying to them that you need, then at what point do you stop to say, okay, maybe this is not the person that I should be sharing this intimate experience with because clearly they can't handle what it is that I am saying that I need. Hmm. Hmm. You know, you know, when you said earlier that, um, when before I was married, I, I didn't marry until I was uh, 35, right? So I was older getting married, right? So before I, and so my, my, now I tell people I'm very transparent because I tell people this because I want them to also do the same thing, right? And that's why I say to people that I, so my husband and I, we, we are in the habit of going to marriage counselor every other year, whether something's wrong or not, right? But what happens is sometimes we get there and I'd be like, wait a minute, Women, what now? Cause, what? Cause I didn't even know that. Cause like you didn't tell me that, right? So, I, I, I can recall early on in our marriage, and in this, in this month, we'll be married 18 years. I need to knock on wood somewhere, anywhere, cause this ain't for no punks. You got to be ready to do what you got to be ready to do when you say you're gonna be married, right? <laughs> Let me just put that out there. But I remember early on in our marriage where where we had a conversation about sex, right? And I said, well, we just don't have it enough. And we had it more before, you know, we were married. And he said to me, because you would come on to me, right? You were the aggressor. And now that we've gotten married, you don't do that. Now I got to think about, hmm, but you know what it is? I, I thought about it. And I said, it's because of where I'm from. And I always say I'm from the deep South of Mississippi, right? The way that I was raised and also trying to understand what submission meant, right? For me at that time. And for me, some, when I was, when I was single, you know, I talked about how I got that fast word, right? I was fast. I, I did what I wanted to do. It was about me. Right. But when I got married, my first thought process was it was about him and when he wanted to have sex with me and so I would wait on him to come to me for sex but that that didn't work and see I didn't even realize that I was with the aggressor so much prior to to now he says that now she's but you're not now right and so it was because of my thought process of excuse me now I got to wait on him to, and I got to be docile and I got to be submissive and I got to wait on him to do this. Right. So which are, which, which are myths and misconceptions that if I wasn't going to the marriage counselor and we didn't talk about it, this could be like piles and piles, years and years of pil- things piling on that we're not even talking about. We're just sweeping under the rug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's this, um, this concept, the Madonna whore concept Hmm. uh, complex. It's called the Madonna whore complex. And Hmm. so, you know, men tend to want their women to be pure and they will put them up on a pedestal. Um, But at the same time, you know, they want them to approach them in certain ways or to do certain things but because society stigmatizes certain behaviors as being horse type behaviors, mm. you know, it's like this duality of, well, which one do I choose? And, mm. and, and bottom line is you got to just be le- learn to be true to yourself, you know, evaluate who it is that you are and be okay with being that person. And so 
somebody who can't accept certain things from you is probably not somebody that you should be sleeping with. You said with. it again. You said it again. You not that again. you should have to explain <laughs> yeah. and convince them that who you are is okay. Yeah. It's that you should be able to say to yourself, you know what? If you can't accept this and if this doesn't work for you, I understand and I yeah. can appreciate your perspective and I can move on hmm. because- you know, no sense in being in a situation where you sexually frustrated yeah, and you don't have a voice to express that you're frustrated. Like, and what should, and now, so I'm, so I'm going to address this because I don't, I don't want people saying that. Yeah. I was listening to, um, uh, uh, uh this podcast and they, they said, Hey, um, if, if the person's not right for you, then you should, you should let them go. You should leave them. So if, if you're in a committed uh, marriage, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. And you're having these sexual frustrations, which it happens often, because I promise you, I talk to women all the time. You just, you just have no clue the conversations that women have with me because I'm open to receive it, right? But if they have this sexual frustration and they're married, what should they do? What should they be doing? I should so, say. So here's the thing. Dr. Adrian is not somebody that's going to ever tell anybody to leave their situation. So uh -huh. what I said was, if you cannot have a conversation mm -hmm. with the person that you are having sex with about what your needs are, then perhaps you should evaluate who you are having sex with. Perhaps, perhaps. Right. And so, so never going to be somebody that's going to tell, even, even with the couples that I work with, yeah. you know, and they say, well, what should we do? And I say, I, I don't know. That's a decision that you have to yeah. make for yourself. Yeah. Um, so I'm not somebody that's going to ever tell anybody to leave their situation. But if you are in a situation and there's no progression at some mm. point, you're either going to decide to get some help and support or accept that there will be no progression. So mm. there is no such thing as standing still. We are mm. moving forward or we are moving backwards. And so Ooh. that's what I say to all of my couples or whoever is in a relationship, that's what you're doing. And yeah. so you can only tread water for so long until your arms and your legs get tired mm. and you start to go up under that water. Mm. Uh, and then what comes after that is drowning. So mm. you either got to be moving forward or we're moving backwards, but there's no such thing as standing still. And so we have to be a lot more comfortable with just having conversations yeah. where we are true to our truths. This is what I need. Yeah. And once you have expressed what your needs are, you've done your 50%. The next part is the other person's response, which yeah. they're responsible for, and you don't get to control. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Adrian, listen, listen, you know, you know, you know, I love you, right? <laughs> and what I promise you, I have so many quotes that you have written there. Like, you need to just write a book of quotes, like really, truly, I say it first, right? Dr. Adrian, I say it first. Dr. Adrian, you just said <laughs> you can only tread water for so long, right? You're either stand, you're either moving forward or moving backwards, which moving backwards you shouldn't be doing anyway. But the standing still and the treading water, like you said, eventually you're going to get tired and you're going to drown, right? And so you're going which, under. You're, you're going up, which which okay. which you're going under, which which brings me to when we talk about is sex for us our or our partners is understanding what your love what your love language is, right? Mm -hmm. And so earlier when we talked about uh, masturbation and self pleasuring, we you you talked about we can learn you know what our love language is so we can communicate that to our partners but we first have to understand what our love language is and I mean for women I always say this is what I say to women that um and, and when I use the word uh, uh girl I'm using gender if you will not so much a woman or, or, or age right and so what I what I often say to girls is that you know they say that guys say because I always tell people that in college I had a lot of male friends right mm -hmm. and so having and and they and they were and they did, become became my brothers and so I have these brothers of, of friends and what I learned from them is about what was important to them how they really felt about sex it's really and truly helped me to understand sex right how what they really felt about sex what they felt about the girl who was having sex with them what they felt about the girl that they called a girlfriend because they would have several would be a girl who they was having sex with and or a girlfriend right and so they would they would really help us to understand just in conversation how they felt about the girls so 
but as I've gotten older, because some of these guys, I'm still having conversations with some, I'm still doing stuff, they ain't got no business, but that I ain't gonna die for them, so I can't live for them, right? But one of the things that I often tell uh, women is that, you know, when they say, guys say, you know, when we do, you do this, don't fall in love. Like, cause that's what guys say, like, don't fall in love, right? But, but, but the fact of the matter is, is that women feel differently about sex than what guys do, right? And if you're not gonna allow us to be a girl when, when having sex, then we're, then now you're telling us not to be who we are, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't have both sides of the coin. You, if you want us to be a girl and you want us to be who we are, then you got to understand that being a girl means that we're, we're, we're going to be emotional because that's who we are. We're emotional creatures. We're going to feel differently. We're, we're probably going to want to be under you because that's just who we are. It's called being a girl. So I have literally coined this phrase with my, with my, with my friends. And I say, well, it's, it's called you a girl because that's what girls do like if that if that's who you want if you want a girl then you have to you can't you can't have you can't have a girl over here and not have these emotion and not have these tears because some of us this is what we do right so if you say you want a girl this these this is all the things that comes with being a girl so when understanding what your love language is and what people need i mean that girls tend to need things to be done before that actual process of, of getting to the sex, right? We want to be talked to some of us. We want to have conversation. We want you to hold our hands, right? And sometimes, you know, I, I mean, I really don't cook. You know, my, my daughter's in 11th grade, so that's not what I do. I need it most, most of her life. So I don't do it so much in there, right? But some people even want their spouses or girlfriends or whomever partners to cook for them, right? Mm -hmm. And that is a part of what their love language is. So what we have to understand because we have both genders or all genders who listen to the podcast is that what do we need to do to understand um, our, our partner's love language, if you will? Well, so if we're talking about Gary Chapman's five love languages, a couple of things, your love language can change. And so depending on where you are in your life, what you got going on, your experience, previous experiences, what your needs are can change. And ah. so I recommend, especially for the couples that I work with, that they do the five love languages assessment at least once a month. Ah. I mean, once, I'm sorry, once a year. And if they have had any type of um, life-changing events, mm -hmm. which are not always negative because a life-changing event can be a graduation. It can be a marriage. It can be a baby. Those are all life-changing events. Mm -hmm. Then I recommend when there are life-changing events that, you know, a couple of months after that, you probably need to do your assessment again because mm -hmm. your needs have probably shifted based on the life-changing event. So, you know, I recommend that people do the assessment, even as individuals, mm -hmm. do it at least once a year. If you are mm -hmm. inside of a relationship, you know, maybe every six months, six months, depending on what's going on with you. But if you don't know how it is that you need to be loved, you can't mm. communicate to anybody else how you need to be loved. Mm -hmm. And so even in terms of taking the assessment, that's just step one. That's mm -hmm. problem identification. And we don't mm. fit in that because the next step is now that we can put a word to it, what does that mean? Mm. Because I can remember at a time when I was married, my love language was um, acts of service. Mm. That was my number one love. Language. Acts of service. Acts, acts of, of service. service. And mm -hmm. so would have dialogue with my ex-husband about it and his interpretation of acts of service was so different from what I needed. Mm. So he would cook a meal mm -hmm. and, you know, um, that was his acts of service and let me know that, you know, there was a meal that was cooked. And I tried to explain to him, first of all, that's not the need that I have. Number mm. one, um, because what I need from you is to pay these bills. That's mm -hmm. the act of service that, I that you're looking for. Yeah. But not only that, you are doing something that encompasses you. Mm -hmm. It's not specific to me because it would self -serving. be self-serving. It's self-serving. You were fixing a meal for me and you were not eating. You are fixing a meal because you are hungry. And as a result of your hunger, I get to benefit from it. And so you think that you have done a service for me. Hmm. So even in identifying what your love language is, there has to be a conversation with your partner to understand 
what that means for them. And so and, and most people love you based on who they are, not based mm. on who you are. So the five love languages is just a great place to start those conversations mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, what it is that you need. So, so the five love languages, how do we um, get, what, what is it? It's a book. Yes, yeah, by Gary Chapman. Five, oh, Gary five, Chapman. Languages, mm -hmm. five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. But mm -hmm. there's also an online assessment. And so it's the number five lovelanguages.com. Mm -hmm. And so you can go on there. It's a free assessment and you mm -hmm. can, you know, you can print it out. You can see, you know, what it is that you need. It gives suggestions, even in terms of how someone can love you in, in your particular area. What's the website again? It's the number five. Oh, the number five. Uh-huh. And so it's five love languages.com. Okay. Uh-huh. So yeah, five I, love languages.com. I'm going to need, need Gary Chapman to run me <laughs> money. And I'm going to need um, you know, the 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 five, the the uh, four agreements that I'm always talking about, Don McGill Ruiz to run me some money. I'm gonna tell you how to reach out to me. I'm already rich, but uh, you know, but those are just two great tools that I believe yeah. in, so that I use them often. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you now. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how you need to reach out to them so you can start getting some funding from them because you do talk about them a lot and and your reach is 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 really good. And if you're talking, you're not only talking about them on your platform, but you're talking about them on other people's platforms. So, and but 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 the but the fact of the matter is, it's something that you truly believe in, and oh, you have examples of this has has worked, right? It works. Yeah. And so for. So thank you for just even giving us that because you could say, well, I'm not telling you. I, I was on a podcast before uh, with, with a group of people and they kept, and one lady kept saying, and they said, well, what other books could you tell us to get for something? She kept saying, well, I don't talk about other people's book. Now, I didn't necessarily like that because you talking about other people's book is not going to take anything from people getting your book, right? Uh -huh. So, you, you, know, you know, so I really appreciate you even telling us and being selfless, if you will, to tell, uh, tell us um, about other um, vehicles that we can use for self-healing because yeah. ultimately that's what it's about. It's about self-healing and self-exploring and all those things. So, and empowerment. And it's, all, and it's all about empowerment and growth. You know, every single that day. That part, Dr. We, Adrian. We something every single day to help us grow. And if you're mm -hmm. not, again, if you're not moving forward, you are moving backwards. Yeah. Because if you stand standing still, you're treading water, then you're going to get tired soon. So <laughs> decide where you want to go and forward. Since, since the world moves forward, right? And time moves forward, why should you then now move backwards? So here's a question that um, some, 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 some person sent in to me. Okay. How much um, is too much when it comes to masturbation? How much is too much? Because one lady even said to me, she, she read something about... Um, um, it can affect your kidneys. Now I tried to research that, but I only got rhetoric. And, I, and when I do research it's for me, because I'm a student, it has to be scholarly, scholarly art, art articles, if you will, that has been researched and validated if this is what the outcome is. But um, so, so I found it was something about with men, but it was not true. It was something probably some myth had been told, but how much um, uh, is too much? Um, so a lady said, I may masturbate every day. I'm single and I don't want to be out here trying to meet somebody and I want to be safe. And so for me, safety is um, masturbation. And so she said she masturbate every day, but you know, she's reading these articles that say that may be too much. And, you know, so I said, I'm going to make sure that we talk about that when we talk about masturbation. So that question yeah. is for you. Yeah, so so there's no research out there that says if you do it too much, these things are going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think that I am just somebody who's going to always say that, you know, all things in moderation. And so mm -hmm. you have to know your body and you have to know yourself. And so a big part of masturbation is not just about the physical response, but it's also about your mental and your emotional and mm. where it is that your mind allows you to go in order to even be able to climax and reach the state of orgasm. Mm. And so you have to be careful that if you are, because I have known some men or some women who masturbated so frequently that when they were with their partner, they were not able to climax hmm. the same way. 
And, and it's mm. because of a, a couple of things, especially for women, if they are using toys, adult toys mm -hmm. that are battery operated adult toys, mm -hmm. men's penises don't work that way. Yeah. So if you are using that too much and you having the expectation that when you get with bro man over here, that yeah. be the same feeling, yeah. then you are setting yourself up for failure. So yeah. all things have to be done in moderation, but yeah. there's a research out there that says if you do it every day, that it causes some sort of health risk or yeah. anything else. Yeah, yeah. but, but uh, Cyborg Raheem Devon has a song out called uh, Bob, Battery Operated Boyfriend. He said he he could be better than your battery operated boyfriend. This is a really, it's a really nice song <laughs> that yeah. talks about, um, really, really, really is talking about masturbation, you know, and he's saying, I can be better than, I can be better than this because I can give you these things that Bob can't give you, right? So I often, you know, I'll say, I'll say to women that it's okay to have a Bob, right? So, because we know that some people are doing really well in this industry, in this area of having um, self-pleasuring toys because it is something that um, women do. And when I, when I try really hard to find uh, statistics of how many women do masturbate, it, it was, I could not find. It's going to be difficult to find it because people are not being that honest and mm. open in their conversations. And mm -hmm. so, you know, and you know, the other thing is that I can remember when I was married mm -hmm. and, you know, the marriage was on the rock. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I was married 29.5 years, but <laughs> it was over long before me. You know, it was, it was oh, over long before me. It was for me, Dr. Adrian. Yeah. So I was riding my time. I was yeah. riding it out. Yeah. And um, I was treading water. Yeah. So I could move forward. But, but I can remember. You was getting tired. But I can remember when my ex wanted to watch me masturbate and mm. I would say to him, this is not for you. Mm, mm -hmm. And he would then say, well, you know, you don't have to do that because I'm right here. Oh, and yeah. A lot of times that's what men think. But the masturbation was for me because, first of all, emotionally, I was disconnected from yeah. him. And yeah. so I didn't want him touching me. I didn't mm -hmm. want to be with mm -hmm. him. I wanted mm -hmm. to come over here by myself, mm -hmm. have this experience so that mm -hmm. I could go to sleep. And mm -hmm. so, you know, but a lot of times in, in men's arrogance, they think that, you know, somehow they are the substitution for masturbation. And yeah. the fallacy in that is if it's about self-pleasure and self-exploration, that means you're not a participant in this. Now, if <laughs> yeah. that is what the two people decide in terms of what we are experiencing together, and we are deciding that we want to use masturbation as a form of stimulation between us, yeah. you can decide that. But yeah. you know, to think that women masturbate because they can't get a man, or yeah. that that that's a myth. That's that, a myth. That's not what that's it's a about. Myth. It yeah. is about the woman knowing her own body, what yeah. brings her pleasure and satisfaction. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I, and I, and I, and I hope that, and I, I'm, I promise you, I'm going to be telling some of my brothers, like, you got to listen to this podcast because that is something that they say to me. Like, I don't understand why women need to masturbate if they have me. Right. And, and I always say, what? Like, that's crazy. Right. Right. But, but, but one of the things that you just said is the emotional detachment. Like if I don't like, see, see, it's some, it's some people they have that what they have this whole sex thing and then they make up and they, they mad and they still have sex see for me I'm, I'm that's me if I don't like you don't touch me right, right. you, you know th th that's ex that's exactly who I am so it's important for when you said the arrogance of men to think that but the majority of them think that way because society has told them that like I'm the author I'm the biggest author I I am your god if you will when it comes to sex and so how dare you utilize a bob or utilize self to 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 masturbate or self pleasure so that that little particular part that you just said was very important for men to understand that it has nothing to do with you right yeah but you can learn something from it if you're willing to learn and most are not like, because for men, and that's why the question was, is sex for us or our partners? Because for men, they, they think sex is for them. My thought process and my movement of women and my friends is that 
sex is for us and, and, and I always have been. And we so oblige you to come in and, ex- and share this experience with us, right? This is what you should be, uh, what you should be doing and how you should be, connect with us, right? Mm-hmm. So here's here's a question for you, um, uh, Dr. Adrian, and I, and I know we're, we're nearing our time, but so women who are interested, right? Because believe it or not, there are women out there who have never masturbated. Mm-hmm. Right, really and truly, right? So women who want to now start to masturbate, right? And self-explore, what would be their first steps? What should they do? Well, I think that you have to get comfortable with the concept, first of all. And mm-hmm. so, you know, it is, masturbation is also a self-acceptance. And so, mm. so this is a- What? Wait a minute, stop right there. Don't, don't, don't skate for it. Don't, don't skate, don't skate for it. Don't skate over that right there. Okay. What did you just say? What did you just say? It's a form of self-acceptance. Wow. And so, you know, wow. when, when I deal with people who talk about their insecurities in terms of what their bodies look like and body shame and, you know, you got to keep the lights off and, you know, all this, all of mm. that- deals with acceptance of self. And Mm -hmm. so when Mm. you are able to accept yourself, you're able to love on yourself. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, I say, go stand in the mirror. Let's start there. Yeah. Start with standing in the mirror, totally naked and learning to appreciate the beauty that is you, whatever Mm. that looks like for you, Mm. you know? And from there, you know, touch yourself. Hmm. See what it feels like to look at yourself and to touch yourself hmm. and, and you know go into the shower mm-hmm. because getting you some soap and water and starting to touch on yourself and rub on yourself it's going to stimulate you because what people don't understand is that self-exploration is going to actually stimulate you physically because that's just how the body works, hmm. that's how it responds. And so that's why when people are in same sex relationships and some people can't understand, they're like, oh my God, how could you be with somebody from the same, be, be with someone who's the same sex as you? Uh-huh. And it's because the body is stimulated by touch. Uh-huh. It's not about who's touching you. Uh-huh. Just uh-huh. That's right, that's right, that's right. And so so we all have those point those those Mm. those personal touch points Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. they're getting those pleasure points those pleasure points Mm -hmm, they're mm going to get stimulated Mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah so start with that Mm -hmm. being able to look at yourself in the mirror Mm -hmm. naked and unashamed Mm -hmm. being able to accept the beauty that is your body and Mm -hmm. then start touching yourself Mm -hmm. see what feels good to you Mm -hmm. you don't know when the hairs on your arms stand up Mm. right (laughs) right and you ain't got to have no guy tell work, you, right? Everything don't work for everybody. And so, mm-hmm. you know, some people's bodies are more sensitive in different areas, but being sensitive does not mean that you are being aroused. So mm. you got to be willing to have those conversations. Mm. D- D- Dr. Adrian, that, that, that's good. Hey, Dr. Adrian, this has been, like I always tell you, I, I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm being on the sofa, right? But that's so good because people are gonna want to know, like, how do I start this process, right? Yeah. And how do I even, you know, we, myself and the OBGYNs, we started this movement of, because they said when women come in to get their annuals, um, they, they, they may notice a bump or something that literally is a, a tag or like a, a mold that has been there, but because they're not looking at their sales with the mirror, mm-hmm. right there, they have their partners looking at them, but they're not looking at their sales. Mm-hmm. They're not aware of how they look in their, in their vaginal area era. So we're starting this mirror movement where we say at least once a year, right? When you come in, why are you getting undressed? Take the mirror, look at yourself, right? right. You and need so, to know what's down there. You need to know what's down there. But, sure. but women don't do that. But that goes back to that self-acceptance, right? Because if you told that this is not a good thing and it don't look good and it don't feel good and it don't smell good and all that, then you now believe that, like you said, you're growing weeds, right? But how do you turn it around and grow the flowers? And you just gave us some very important steps of how to do that, right? Start by looking in the mirror, start, start. You gave us the steps, of how to start if this is what we want to do with Mm self-pleasuring and so is sex for us or our partners 
answer that question. Sex is for, for you and your partner. Mm -hmm. And so if anything that you are participating in that does not add value to your life, it's probably taken away from you. Mm -hmm. and, so, and that mm -hmm. goes for both people. So if you are just there and you're not getting anything from it, why are you doing it? What mm -hmm. is the purpose? All you're doing, and you can't get time back. Cause all you're doing is wasting time. Yeah. Not getting pleasure. You wasting time. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. You know, people always say people drop nuggets. Like you dropped a 20 piece. However, you know, I don't know what McDonald's do with they, they, their chicken nuggets and they, they go up and you say you get a mouth for a certain amount, but you have literally dropped so many nuggets. You know, this, this is so good. I, I, you know, I keep telling you that people want to get in, they don't, they can't get in to see you. But I mean, I feel like I need to just start coming over there at least. Oh, I, I got another therapist. <laughs> I need to just start coming over there. Let me, because if she is dropping all these nuggets in 45 minutes, right? Imagine you coming and sitting on her sofa and the things that you can help us with, with for clarity, right? But one of the things that you are doing for free is giving us a, a do you do this on a weekly basis your couch conversation every week you're giving us every this thursday. conversation every thursday every and what thursday. And, eight o'clock eight o'clock and i like that that you come on late enough where your day is pretty much over you've eaten dinner you're now in your relaxed mode and you can go on here and you can get free advice yeah. right free advice of how you can now start to move on with things that you're doing in life. Dr. Adrian, so just thank you so much for everything that you do for, um, for us. I, I particularly say Afro descendants because you know I'm, I'm here to put a dent in health disparities, mental health disparities, conversation disparities, uh, look, self-pleasuring and masturbation disparities because with, when it comes to women, we do have a disparity in that area. And so the more that we talk and empower ourselves, the better that we are with understanding. Um, and Dr. Adrian, I, I know I, I know it takes me a lot to get you on here, but when you all hear you, I mean, it's so good, right? <laughs> but I, let me just talk about one quick thing. You said the uh, Madonna Horror complex. What can people read about the Madonna horror complex? Because that's important to understand. Yeah, um, they can just Google it. And so, okay. I mean, it's a it's a psychology concept, but mm -hmm. you know, it is the it's the good. I want the good girl, but I want her to be a bad girl kind yeah. of thing in its yeah. simplest form. And yeah, it's how men yeah. tend to size women up in terms of sexuality yeah. and what it is that they want and what it is they say they want you know yeah it's the, who am i going to take home to meet mama yeah is who am i going to just take out on saturday night yeah the time with yeah yeah, yeah. Gerald, Gerald Laverse said he want a lady in the street and a freak in the bedroom so right. that that kind of sums it up and and right. i'm i'm going to let you go at there I, i'm so excited and you know like i said it, it's kind of like the way i felt when i did and i know this comparison is going to be so extreme but it's kind of the way i felt when i first did the um, when we did the uh vaccination um event and i said at the beginning of the show i'm saying no i'm not getting vac vaccinated right and i said by the end of the show i'll let y'all know if i'm going to be vaccinated or not and i remember people reaching out to me and say you know at the end of the show you didn't say whether or not you were going to be vaccinated so i i'm i mean i'm going to use which i have been vaccinated but i'm going to use that for an example so going into this show like i said to you i felt nervous i felt nervous when you said masturbation on the show to say i'm, I'm going to do your masturbation show right but at the end of this show i i literally feel like i, I you just gave me a grammy an oscar because i feel so empowered to you know i can put it on my chest say yeah i said a masturbation right mm -hmm. get used to it i feel so empowered with just the conversation that you have said this is 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 the self acceptance see that's so big in in the self expectance and that you don't have to have fear and shame of feeling that way so right. just thank you for even and and if you help me and, and i can sometimes be a hard knock even though i'm a forever student i can be a bit stubborn something but but if you're if you're able to help me, because I think that if people are listening to the podcast, because it's the rhythm notes of health, if you're listening to this, you want to know more. So thank you for helping the audience 
know more about their selves and so they can make better um, health decisions and better self-acceptance, if you will, decisions. So how can someone reach? And I told you, you were trending like all over the world, like with the last, with the last podcast. So how can someone reach you? And are you still doing um, um, virtual uh, counseling? And so how can someone reach you and or get virtual and make sure you tell them again about the couch conversation and and I guess you'll be coming out of a quote book soon because you need one. You can have some segments, right? This is going to be the sex quote book. You, you, you know what? It's, it's funny that you would say that because I actually have some products that will be coming out with some. Yeah. So there was a focus group of people that kind of got together and they went through my podcast and, and yeah. some nuggets as you Yeah. Are. That's what Andrew Gillum calls them too when I yeah. do Wellness Wednesday with Andrew Gillum. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Couch Versations with Dr. Adrian every Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, on Facebook. And it's through the Jericho Broadcast Network platform. So they can download the MyJBN app um, mm -hmm. on their devices or they can just go to Facebook and it's Couch Versations with Dr. Adrian. So that's every Thursday at 8 p.m. And, you know, Lounge Versations is coming. Uh -huh. uh, I have to... You know, and, and lounge conversations with Dr. Adrian is where it will go down after dark. So yeah, more conversations of an adult nature, yeah. uh, but some very necessary conversations. And so, but I am pacing myself. Yeah, pace yourself. I am pacing myself because yeah. I see about 40 clients Monday through Thursday. So wow. Um, yeah. So my mom said go slow so you can go some more. That's what my mama yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> like go that slow so you can good. go some more. But Dr. Adrian, that's good because that means that if you're if you're seeing the, that many clients, that means well, first of all, we got to find some more space in the day so we can get in to see you, right? But it also means that that people are coming to talk to someone about the things that they are going through so they can heal themselves, right? Because if we start to, you, you know what else you said on your show? You said, I like to keep quoting your conversation show, but it was so good. But you know what else you said? You said that the when you start to have peace within yourself, then everything around you will be peaceful, yeah. right? So I say, I pray for peace every day. Mm -hmm. But when you said that, right? And I said, this isn't bringing me peace. I said, well, then... According to what Dr. Adrian said, with the facts she just gave, then I'm not peaceful with myself with that, right? So I got to work on me and stop looking for things outside of me to fix me, right? Or fix the situation or fix the incident that occurred because really and truly it's me. So when Michael Jackson said man in the mirror, he was on something, right? He was on something. I say it all the time. Look, we yeah. don't start there. We're going to take a long, hard stare at the person that you spend 24 hours mm. a day with. Mm. The only person that you are always with is you. Is you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Dr. Adrian. Thank you so much. This has really been wonderful. It is always good talking to you. I know that people love you. Now, Dr. Adrian, listen. Mm. Now, when you blow up, blow up, blow up and got that TV show and you know, you got me. Don't forget, this is what people this is how people do it. Me, I'm gonna do it to you. <laughs> Don't forget me over here saying. Dr. Adrian, now you know I had you on my podcast way back when, right? So no, really, that's that's my way of saying, you know, what you're doing is important, right? And the moment, and for me, the moment that more people understand what you, why, why I even connected with you, right? And that gives me chills. Like my connect, I met you at an event. I keep saying that, but who would have known that the connection would have taken us this far but if I hadn't had some peace within self to even reach out to you right mm -hmm. and you connect with me then we wouldn't even be here so just thank you and thank you to the person and she knows who she is that connected us because I feel that you have as you said pulled me reached pushed me forward to places that I need to be as well as the people who listen to uh, the Rhythm Notes of Health podcast so thank you so very much and I won't hold you yeah. anymore for your day you have a good day and um Listen, we we gonna have to come back and revisit um some conversations about um sex reward uh -huh. and punishment okay uh, we'll do that we'll okay. absolutely do that sex do reward that. and punishment because that is big and because that's what women do and men too and we do have to talk about that you know what's gonna happen right <laughs> they're gonna be saying they 
but go on the Rhythm Notes pod, a Rhythm Notes of Health podcast. They're talking about sex, but we 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 have to talk about the things that we need to feel good, heal ourselves, and to let go of, like you said, so we can now blossom in flowers with flowers. If flower if flowers are the things that are pretty to us, right? And if weeds are the things that are not pretty to us, we have to understand what we need to do yes. to let them go. So we absolutely will. And that that is one that you what is what is your midnight show called? Lounge Versation? Lounge Versations. That's a conversation we could uh-huh. we could do like a, a double uh show and talk about on the lounge versation because it is something that we need to talk about. And, and Dr. Adrian, I'm gonna bring you back, believe it or not, because I'm having a show on the uh, women with sex in their 20s, 30s, uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Because I told you that one of the doctors said I have a lady in her 80s. She is actively having sex. And so the importance of having you there is to help these women understand how they feel the way that they feel. Because having that show and not having you there will be a disservice to everyone because the, 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 the goal is to connect the mm-hmm. dots, right? Because some people have said to me, that means I got to be having sex when I'm 80. Like, Ludacris said, if you don't feel good, you just ain't doing it right. Or something like that he said, right? I, I mean, you know, I'm just saying. It, yeah. Again, people yeah. who see it as a chore yeah. instead of the pleasure and the reward that is associated with yeah. it, you better either check your partner or check yourself. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Adrian. Until next time, have a wonderful, wonderful week. And happy Mother's Day. In absolutely, absolutely. Happy earliest mo- Mother's Day to you also. You. No, not just not just for the kids that you born and raised, but for all of us that you're teaching something and giving something to live better lives. Well, thank you so much. I yes, appreciate ma'am. it and I'll see you next time. Okay, all right, bye-bye. Bye. Oh my gosh, this- Are we off? Are we off? I'm going to try and remove you again. Let's see if I can remove you again, remove. Okay, now, (laughs) bye-bye. So this was so, this was so good with Dr. Adrian. Um, This with Dr. Adrian has been so, so good. Um, She gave us so many nuggets of things that we should be thinking about. And, but the thing that I want to talk about now is um, this Eric Roberson song. And I want to make sure that you hear this good. So I may have to start it over because my uh, musical note person is my light skin boyfriend today. And I have to make sure that you're going to be hearing this song soon. So I'm gonna start over, right? So today's um, musical note with the Rhythm Notes of Health uh, podcast is Eric Roberson. He is what most people know my light skin boyfriend. And I say that because um, he, I fell in love with him, well, his music, if you will, on this song. And this song, I remember being at a concert and I didn't know him, it's it's been a long time. Um, And I remember he came out and he started singing this song and it was all these people and I was kept saying, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, to get to the front of the stage. And I was literally just kind of mesmerized with him singing this song. This song, is literally my go-to song when anything stressful is going on. I am listening to Just a Dream. If I don't have it, that I can play it. I listen to, I sing it in my head. Um, I had a dream we, it's my favorite song to listen to. But Eric Roberson has been doing this thing for a long time. His first album in 2001, he is an independent artist. He is sometimes called Mr. Independent Artist. He's on Blue Ero Soul. You can get him on his website at um, eggrobersonmusic.com. Eric has also done something so very untraditional in music as he it invites you to understand and see what he does in the process of making this music and presenting it to us. And it's called Join the Process. And 
um, that's on his website if you want to join the process and see how he comes up with writing this music and uh, producing this music. You can go to his website again at ericrobersonmusic.com. And he is on Twitter, I am Eric Roberson. And he's at Eero44 on Instagram. But Eric Roberson is uh, my musical note for today. I absolutely love him. If you know me, Kai, I, or I enter, or Kai I enter, then you know that Eric Roberson is my life skin boyfriend. And um, so go check him out. He is Mr. Independent Music. He has done over 15 albums to date, and he is still making beautiful music. He also produces for other artists and writes for other artists. He's a very, very good writer. I can go on about Eric Robinson forever, but at this point, I am going to um, move on, let you go, and um, go check Eric Robertson out. And, and you, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Oh boy, so today, 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 this whole self-pleasuring or is sex for us, our partners, or masturbation has been so good. As I say before, I have learned so much from Dr. Adrian because there are so many things that we need to talk about when it comes to self-acceptance. That's what she said. How do we accept ourselves and be happy with who we are? And how do we help our partners to understand this is what we like? right? She also talked about this reward punishment system, which we're going to talk about again in the future. And she talk, talked about our love language and how it changes. That was very loud to me. She said, hey, your love language was, is this, but your love language can change after a, a life event. She also told us about some books that we can get to help us to understand what our love language is. She said, we can go to the website five, the number five, love languages of love. Dr. Adrian does her couch versations on Facebook Live on Thursday nights at eight o'clock. If you're not tuning in, you're missing out. So make sure that you tune in. Um, remember, we repeat what we don't repair. We repeat what we don't repair. So let's start repairing this self-acceptance that we have. And remember when life moves fast and your mind does too, remember to breathe. It'll get you, get you through. You should be breathing five times, five times a day to help you with anxiety and maybe masturbating and help yourself feel good because it's a part of self-pleasuring, it's a part of self-acceptance and it's a part of you understanding who you are. It's, it's no longer taboo. We have to empower ourselves and if you listened to the podcast, then you, you understand that Dr. Adrian told you what you need to do first steps to start doing this. This has been really good. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. I am Kai Ianta. You've been listening to the Rhythm Notes of Health. I am the soul of public health. Have a good day. Bye-bye.